I think there are two principal dimensions uh, to this. Uh, one has to do, if you like, with prevention, mm -hmm. and the other has to do with, if you like, recovery in the case of, uh, of terrorism. Now, in the case of recovery, it is really a question of uh, acting upon what is already um, a obligation enshrined in the treaties, i.e. solidarity, mutual assistance. Uh, what more can member states do in order to assist one another in the event uh, of an attack, as indeed has uh, already taken place in the case of uh, France and, and Belgium recently. Uh, then there is the whole aspect of prevention, and this has both a dimension that has to do with countering violent extremism, uh, what more can we do in terms of education, culture, on and offline uh, communication, removing unlawful content from the internet, uh, but also developing a counter-narrative which really uh, tells uh, the world and tells our citizens what we are about uh? and it has to be a counter-narrative um, in which if you like us living up to our own values is the most powerful antidote that we have against uh, violent extremism so that's one dimension of this the other dimension has to do with uh, counter-terrorism in the more strict sense of, uh, of the term. <clears throat> and here, basically, the main task at hand is really that of strengthening information sharing and intelligence cooperation between uh, member state agencies, as well as obviously uh, strengthening their cooperation with non-EU uh, countries. But the big uh, work to be done really is internal. Uh, it's quite clear, if we go back to the terrorist attacks that have taken place uh, recently that there has been a massive failure of intelligence and it's not just a failure of intelligence of the Belgian intelligence services or the French intelligence services the point is that they're disconnected from one another